My name is Noella. I have an amazing family. Say thank you. I had an incredible life. Then one day, everything changed. I'm sick. I don't have drugs. I don't have mental illness, but I don't have drugs. I don't have a baby. I don't have a baby. This is my story. Hello and welcome to Mentor Talks. My name is Asha Bay. I'm your host from the Office of Alumni Affairs in the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. Department of State. Our office opens the door to the million strong exchange alumni network, professional development, and grant opportunities for people who have participated in U.S. government exchange programs. Today, we're talking about mental health matters with Noella Luca, who's an award-winning documentary filmmaker from Kenya, a mental health advocate, and an exchange alumni of the Professional Fellows Program on Inclusive Disability Employment. Welcome to the show, Noella. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asha. You're welcome. So I'm going to just dive right into this. And um, Noella, you were living out your dream of studying filmmaking in the US when a manic episode turned your life upside down. Could you tell us about that time and how you got your life back on track? So my my passion has always been in storytelling and I luckily got a um, partial scholarship to study, to study filmmaking in the US. And then um, um, about seven months down the line, I woke up in a psych ward. Um, and that was a turning point in my life because it meant that I had to live with the reality of mental illness. Um, unfortunately, during my um, past manic episode, which landed me into hospital, I had no idea that um, I had a mental illness. I did not know my diagnosis. And um, when I was um, released to go home um, in the US in my apartment, um, a, few, a few days, Later, I was back in hospital because unfortunately I withdrew from taking medication and had another relapse. And this was because unfortunately at the time, no one told me um, that I had a diagnosis of unspecified bipolar and what that meant for me. And um, so because there were a lot of changes happening to my body, the medication was a bit too strong. I decided to come back home. And for me, it was um, a journey of trying to understand myself. And when I came back home uh, is where I found a community and um, got, got a lead to my first hospital visit where they went through all the paperwork that I had from the US. And um, it is then, um, it was disclosed to me that I had like a mental illness and my diagnosis really meant that this was the beginning of a lifelong journey that I had to embrace and it wasn't going to be easy, but um, because I think of the dynamics of not knowing my condition in the initial stages and what it meant, um, I was curious and I feel like I took that curiosity of being a filmmaker to find out what does this really mean? What does this mean to me and my body? Because already I had started noticing that the side effects of the medication were taking a toll on my body. So I took, um, I took two passions together, filmmaking and um, my passion of just wanting to find out what's happening to me and explore the journey of working on a film. And you actually, yeah, you've created this uh, great film. Um, so it's on BBC's Africa YouTube page. And it was, um, it's called What's Eating My Mind. And, and that's where you address the topic of mental health. Um, but you did something different with the film than you have done with the other films. So can you tell us yeah. more about that? Well, What's It In My Mind is a personal film that looks at the reality of families living in Kenya. Um, previously, I have worked on other stories, most of which are centered around human experiences. Um, 
such as climate change, human wildlife conflicts. Um, but this, this particular film is a personal portrait of my life my journey of both myself and my family going through the motions of mental illness, as well as some of the people in my support group um, who I came to, um, to become friends with along in the journey. Mental health is, has become a huge topic. Um, and it, from what I've read, it affects about one in eight people around the world. What are some of the things that you're hoping to accomplish with this film? Um, so this film um, opens a dialogue initially. I, ideally, it opens a dialogue to, for people to speak about it. In, in Kenya, uh, my experience with mental illness has been that of um, stigma and discrimination. And a lot of families speak uh, behind closed doors. Um, and ideally, it goes back to the stigma and discrimination and um, looking at Look at, looking at mental health in the Af uh, African perspective, um, we, we tie mental illness to African traditional norms. So um, solutions that have been used um, for the longest time has been going to traditional healers, traditional doctors. And another thing that has also um, made a significant um, impact in how we deal with mental illness is religion. And in most cases, families opt to, you know, um, have you um, have you have 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 like um, a religious leader, maybe a priest or a pastor, come in and pray. Ideally, pray your condition away. But um, in reality, um, there's a lot more that needs to be done. We need to look at it from a perspective that's wholesome, one which. Um, um, by speaking openly about it, we get to de demystify some of these things. And these are some of the aspects that are dealt with within the film. Why is it important for us to actually address the, the situation and the mental illness versus uh, just, for example, praying it away? So mental illness is complex. And um, I, I, I also understand that where people come from when they look at it from a traditional point of view, because mental illness has existed for the longest time possible. But we need to we need to now start looking at ways which actually work and ways which are wholesome, like I mentioned, because um, we are dealing with an invisible illness. And there are, there are ways in which we can deal with them a lot better than what has been done previously. And then also the traditional ways don't work. Um, unfortunately, they don't work. Um, these, are, these are things that have been perpetuated from generation to generation. And we need to move away from that and adopt other ways in which you can deal with your mental wellness. Um, some of the ways in which, for, for example, I have been able to overcome my, my challenges is by being part of a support group, which um, is also featured in the film. Um, support groups help you see that you belong like you're not alone which i feel like for me um particularly and my family was was such a relief because um like i said in the initial stages um i had no idea what my diagnosis meant and then seeing other people and seeing the diversity of other people who also um who also experience mental illness in their own um in their own world also gives you hope that um, you know what, I'm not alone. And if someone else is going through it and we exchange ideas on how we try and navigate through this, then it becomes one step closer to um, destigmatizing it, ideally. So what led to you applying for the Professional Fellows Program and how did that program shape your career? So for me, when I saw the um, application for the Professional Fellows Program, um, it I, ideally, I did not know whether it would be a good fit, but um, within the support group, um, I got to be part of, you know, some workshops, which also um, were able to to show to show us like um, the different dynamics of mental illness, the policies around it, and also most importantly, that mental illness is a psychosocial disability. So the professional fellows program that I applied for was on inclusive disability employment. And for me, I pitched um, mental health as a psychosocial disability. 
And um, at the time, before even I had applied for it, I was already part of a support group. I was already, I, re I had already started filming my support group in my own small ways, just trying to build a story. At the time, I did not know where exactly I was going with the story, but I felt like it was important to document some of the experiences that I was experiencing. And um, also another thing that I embarked on before the application was involving um, African journalists um, from 12 different countries to visit some of the some of the organizations that I was part of to my support group. So, um, and that was an eye-opening experience for me because this African journalist ideally um, wrote articles to the tune of mental illness is ignored and it's prevalent across all African, a lot of African countries. And that is what I used as my application to show that there was a gap within um, mental illness and that I want to use storytelling as an advocacy tool and ideally to empower the people in my support group to be able to be self-advocates. Um, and um, so for me it was using story storytelling as an advocacy tool and ideally that is how I got into the program and also um, I had I had luckily met an alumni of the program and he felt like yes I there, I was on to something so that was also encouraging for me to um, to also jump on to yeah that's great so the alumni network helped you yes it did but at the time I wasn't <laughs> alumni but I yes it did help me. right yeah exactly yes. Yes. yeah and so then so then you went back to the U.S. yes um, yeah, so I went back to the US. I was diagnosed in 2016, came back home um, in 2017, and then um, started my documenting my support group and slowly filming and engaging journalists in, in, in actually portraying us in a humane way. And then in 2019 is when I got um, to be a Spring 2019 fellow. So I know in the film you you talk about how your family has reacted to you your, by being bipolar. How are they now? Um, so with my family, um, interestingly is that I have carried them along with me in the journey of just understanding myself. So like, for example, initially, because we did not have any information and just me being part of a support group, what we'd learn there, the experiences we'd share there or how I would learn more about myself and take those teachings back home and help them also understand that you know this is a lifelong journey because ideally for them it's also a journey as well and in the film I also briefly mentioned that I can I could see the heart in their eyes it was also an encouragement for me to continue telling this very hard topic through film because I needed them to also be seen in a way and the struggles and in, in, an, and in a way um, also represent other families who struggle with this and don't know where to start. So my family has been with me through all this journey. They're actually very proud of the film that I've, I was able to make and are encouraged that, um, you know, other families are reaching out to them and, and asking, you know, how are you able to do this? So, it's a win for both of for all of us as a it's, it's a win for us as a family as well that's lovely i want one last question for you what's your biggest tip for helping people living with mental illness how can society family and friends be most supportive um mental illness is such a taboo subject and for me i feel like um if you're able to find a support group near you a community then um, that will be our first step towards recovery. Um, I'd also encourage you to have a look at one of the resources we, we have for the film. It's called what it, what's it in my mind .com. That is a, is a resource toolkit that um, helps people. At the moment, we have resources that are able to cater for people within Nairobi, but we're looking to expand that beyond Nairobi and also hoping that this mental health resource toolkit, which is a website, can be um, a one-stop resource toolkit within the region as well. Thank you, Noella. Thank you.